Hello, and welcome to this lesson on inflation with me, Mr McIver, here at the London Central and Northwest Maths Hub. Today we'll be looking at two well-known indices for tracking prices known as RPI and CPI. Inflation, what's it all about? It's basically a numerical description of the way prices go up. Lots in the news at the time this has been recorded about the exorbitant price of houses in the southeast and elsewhere in the country. If you had wanted to buy this house back in 2001, you could have found it in the estate agent advertised at around this price here. By this year, it had gone up quite a lot to £750,000. That represents an increase in price of 300% over 16 years. So, do prices always go up? Well, no, of course they don't. Here's a picture of a digital camera. It might look a bit elderly. That's because it is. It's from 2001. It was priced at $800 in the US. The equivalent model today, the price has actually come down to $200, representing a decrease in price of 75%. There are always a few things that get cheaper, but we tend not to call that deflation because the vast majority of stuff goes up. Particular lines such as this digital camera come down in price because of technological changes. Given this rather complicated picture of some prices going up and others going down, how do we end up with headlines like this? Inflation rates jumps to 2.9%. Or indeed, graphs like this one showing what's happened to inflation between the year 2000 and 2014. There is a clue on this graph. If you look at the key over there on the left-hand side, you will see the letters RPI and CPI. These are the two main indices that are used for measuring UK inflation. So what's an index? Well, it's a kind of weighted average. The best way to explain is to show you. Imagine I go into the shop and I have a basket, and I put a few items in this basket. I buy myself some washing liquid, I pick up a loaf of bread, I buy a carton of semi-skimmed milk, and some paper for the printer. These are all standard items that I will buy very regularly, but I won't buy them all every time I go into the shop. For instance, the washing liquid, I probably only need to buy that four or five times a year. So I'm going to give that a weighting of times five. Now, bread, have it for breakfast, have it for dinner, have my sandwiches for lunch. I probably buy two, say, three loaves a week. So I'm going to weight that with a factor of 150. Milk, I don't buy that quite so often, but probably a couple of times a week. So we'll multiply that by 100. And paper, well, that's about 500 sheets there. I probably only buy one pack of that a month. We'll put a factor of 12 on that one. So I multiply out all these numbers to find out how much I spend on all these items in a year. Then I add them all together and I get £384.50. To get my index, I divide that sum by £384.50 and multiply by 100 to get 100. Indices always work off a base year and the index for that base year is always 100. Just a convention that economists use. Now, if I go back to the same shop a year later and buy Exactly the same basket of items, I find, oh, washing powder's gone down a bit. Oh, but bread's gone up. Milk's gone up a very little, and paper's gone down. Does that mean that, in general, prices are going up for me or down for me? What I do is I apply exactly the same weightings as I did before, do all the multiplications, add them all up. Ah, it's a higher figure, but I still divide by the same factor that I used last time, and multiply by 100. And I get a new index of 103.7. That means my basket of items has been going up in price at the rate of 3.7% per year. That is my inflation rate for this particular basket of goods. The indices that are used by economists are a bit more complicated. The main one used to be the Retail Price Index, RPI for short, and it doesn't just use four or five items, it uses hundreds of them, 650 plus. And it doesn't check them in one place, it checks them in dozens of places. So you look at 180,000 different prices, group them together, weight them all with an incredibly complicated set of numbers, and notice 
These numbers change over time, but essentially they're doing exactly the same calculation I just did on a much bigger scale. And what you end up with is a number that you divide and multiply for your base year to generate a figure of 100, and then simply repeat with these adjustments to the weightings so that we can track prices over time. So let's look at a real price index, the retail price index. In October 2017, the RPI rate of inflation was 4%, according to the Office for National Statistics. And here are their statistics. You can see those individual RPIs done each month from 2016 October to 2017 October. Now, you notice they start at 264. That's because for this particular set of figures, the base year is actually January 1987. So I suppose you can tell straight away that between January 1987 and October 2017, prices have actually gone up by 175.3%. But I am more interested in what's happened over the last one year period. What we call the year-on-year -year rate for October 2017. That means I compare the prices this October, which have an index of 275.3, with the index exactly one year previously, 264.8. I calculate the multiplier that gets me from there to there, 1.0397, about 1.04, and that gives me my rate of 4%. So that is how the ONS, the Office for National Statistics, work out their inflation rates using RPI. But the Office for National Statistics has another inflation rate shown, 2.8%. And here are these figures. Oh, well, RPI inflation is 4%. This is CPIH inflation. And here are the CPIH index figures. As you can see, 104.4 divided by 101.6 gives you a year-on-year -year rate of, oh, 1.027, blah, 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 about 2.8%. So it's right, but how come they've got an entirely different set of numbers here? That's because there are two different indices that are very widely used in this country. And this one is called the Consumer Price Index, or CPI. In fact, this is a slightly tweaked one, the CPIH Index, because it includes housing. But it does rather beg the question, why do we have two different indices? It is rather tempting to say, because economists like to make things as complicated as possible. But there is actually a simpler reason. They were founded for very different reasons and are designed to do different things. First of all, why were they invented? RPI was actually invented after World War I. A lot of people came back from the trenches having had a terrible time and the government wanted to protect their way of life a bit. So they invented this index to track cost of living increases so that the people coming back from the war could be paid in a way that reflected the rising cost of living. CPI, on the other hand, wasn't invented until 1996. And it was done for the more technical reason that the UK wanted to be able to compare itself to other countries. So they had to work out their numbers on more or less the same basis that other countries use. Second more difference is they measure slightly different things. RPI includes these things here, mortgage interest, council tax, used car prices. Most private individuals don't buy new cars, they buy used cars. However, CPI, the one that's consistent with the rest of the world, doesn't include mortgage interest, but does include university accommodation, stockbroking fees, which you wouldn't think would affect a lot of people, and new car prices, not used car prices. They also consider slightly different populations. RPI looks at private UK households, not including the very richest, and it doesn't look at institutions. It doesn't look at old people's homes or other places where people might live. It does, however, include money that UK households spend when they go abroad. CPI, on the other hand, only looks at money that's spent in the UK, but does include old folks' homes and other places where people live. And finally, and this is a rather technical difference, they use different types of mean. RPI uses what we call the arithmetic mean. That's add them up and divide by how many you've got. CPI uses the geometric mean. I'm not going to explain that now. You can look it up if you're interested. So they are slightly different. Which begs the next question, why should you care? Well, there's one very important reason. Here are the graphs for CPI and RPI. And you will notice that RPI is generally higher. So if you have a savings plan or a pension, 
and you have the choice of having it linked to CPI or RPI, choose RPI, because it'll generally give you a better return. It is, however, really important for you to be able to carry out RPI and CPI calculations, because for a start, it helps you make sense of what your savings are worth. Let's imagine that £1,000 was put into a savings account for you back in January 2000. How much would you need for it to be worth the same, that is, buy the same amount of stuff, in January 2017? Well, let's look up January 2000, RPI 657.2. Then we'll look up January 2017 and see that RPI is at 1047.4. We work out a multiplier and then we simply multiply £1,000 by that figure and get £1,593.73. So, if your money had been put in a bank account or a savings account, for the value of it to have kept up with inflation, which is a phrase people use to describe their savings, that original £1,000 would now need to have gone up to £1,593.73, and it wouldn't really be any more money. You'd be able to do exactly the same things with it. It just reflects the way prices have gone up. There is another way that you can use RPI and CPI figures, and that is to keep track of what people call the real value of their salary. For instance, uh, from April 2011 to April 2013, public sector salaries remained the same. They were frozen. It was called a pay freeze. In practice, many of them were frozen for longer than that. But let's just look at that two-year period. We'll look at our RPI figures again. We'll look at April 2011, 94.7, and then we'll look at April 2013, 984.3. Now, this time, we're less interested in how much prices have gone up. We're a lot more interested in what proportion of the stuff you used to be able to buy with your salary you can buy now. And the way you do that is you work out a fraction. 924.7, that's what your salary is worth now. And 984.3, is what you would need to buy the same amount of stuff. And you find you get a figure of 0.939 blah, 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 blah. Your salary in 2013 will only be able to buy 93.9% .9 of what it could purchase back in April 2011. And this is often described as a reduction in spending power. Or, if you want to be all political about it, a real terms pay cut. So, to recap. RPI and CPI are the two main indices we use to track changes in the cost of living. Some prices go down over time, but most of them go up, and this is called inflation. When there is a general fall in prices, it's called a deflationary economy, which is generally regarded as a bad thing, although high inflation is also a bad thing. There's a kind of Goldilocks zone in the middle. At the moment, our government aims for 2% inflation, prices going up by 2%, they regard as healthy. To work out how much prices have risen, the first thing you do is decide which index to use. Let's use CPI here. We look at January 2010, we look at January 2015, we work out a multiplier, and we finally convert that to a percentage. So between 2010 and 2014, according to CPI, prices have risen by 12.7%. To work out how much money has fallen in value over the same period, we do the same thing. We decide which index to use. But this time, rather than working out a multiplier, we work out a kind of fraction of old index over new index. And you find, when you convert that to a percentage, the value of money has dropped by 11.3%. Notice that although we're using exactly the same indices, the percentage that prices have gone up is not the same as the percentage by which the value of money has gone down. You do need to pay attention and make sure you do the right calculation. That's it for this lesson. I've left you some questions to do, as well as a spreadsheet with all kinds of RPI and CPI indices, including all the sub-indices that let you drill into what's happened to different types of product. Have a rummage around and try to answer the questions I've given you, as well as the extended task.